Uh, hello everyone, thanks for coming here. I'm Danilo, I've been working on Turnip dri Driver for three years in Egalia. Uh, and I want to give a status update, uh, what we have achieved thus far, and uh, what's coming for us. Um, let's start with uh, the new hardware we support. We now support a lot of hardware. Uh, and recently we started support at uh, 700 series Adreno GPUs. We already merged uh, Adreno 730 and 740 and um, the merge request for uh, the most recent Adreno GPU 750 is being on review. Uh, there are a lot of uh, changes between Adreno generations uh, with for mostly performance reasons. There are registers changed and many new performance features out there. Uh, we also need, we also currently implemented only uh, direct rendering and not uh, tile-based rendering. Adreno GPUs are a bit weird because they support two modes, tiling and uh, direct rendering, which is the same uh, that desktop GPUs support. Um, but tile-based rendering is still work in progress for now. Uh, we also support a lot of, uh, almost all, 600 series uh, GPUs, but there are some variants out there we don't support. Uh, there are five sub-generations of 600 series. We support all of them. Uh, so to add a new one, uh, new variant of the GPU, we just need to uh, change some registers there. Um, as for our features and extensions, uh, we now support uh, Vulkan 1.3 and a lot of uh, extensions with it. Uh, most interesting one for us was uh, dynamic rendering. It's rather simple for um, desktop GPUs because they don't care about uh, render passes boundaries, mostly don't care about them. But for uh, tiled rendering for mobile GPUs, it's a big deal. We have to stitch together the render passes, sometimes even at the, end, at the submission time. It, it could be really nasty. Like, the code is barely readable for it. Um, and we have all extensions implemented for DXVK, VK, D3D Proton, and for Zinc supported. So it's great. Um, while we do not claim Vulkan 1.3 conformance, uh, we do regularly test uh, Vulkan CTS. Uh, we test uh, a lot of game traces. We test games. Uh, but with games, it feels like a whack a mole game right now because there are not a lot of uh, real users out there. And we don't have a proper CI with game traces like Radvi does. Um, another big change uh, we've done are in pipelines. Uh, our GPU has some unique way of, deal of dealing with pipelines and with all the new pipeline-related extensions, uh, we have to rewrite them every time in some way. But thanks to uh, Connor, uh, Connor Abbott, our pipelines are healthy. <coughs> We've done a lot of um, IR3 optimizations which is our backend compiler. They add up a lot uh, with time passing. And we've done uh, a lot of work in debug tooling uh, because we have to reverse engineer, uh, reverse engineer GPU. We deal a lot of uh, with unknown uh, registers, unknown instructions, so we have to be able to quickly understand what's going on right there. 
So I want to spend some time uh, on these debug tools we've implemented thus far. I gave a more in-depth talk uh, last XDC. You could find it at this link. Uh, so what's our, our debug tool? We have GPU breadcrumbs like uh, in uh, Google Flight, uh, graphics flight reco uh, recorder. We have uh, ability to reply common streams. We have um, ability to edit common streams. We can print for, uh, GPU memory. We could print from shader assembly in these common streams. And we could debug uh, register reading of undefined state from registers. I'll describe uh, each of these features a bit more in the following slides. Um, why we even need our own uh, GPU breadcrumbs? There is already a solution for this at Vulkan API level. It's called uh, Graphics Flight Recorder from Google. Uh, it already could tell you where uh, hand occurs at which command. But there are two issues with that. Uh, it's two uh, cores, because, for example, the start of the render pass could translate into like tens or twenty bleeds at the worst case, and each of them may hang. So, API level tooling could be like uh, not great at this. At and what's really prompted uh, me to create. Uh, the breadcrumbs, to implement breadcrumbs in our driver is uh, debugging of unrecoverable hangs. When your computer or board just completely hangs, you cannot do anything, writes to disk doesn't like, come through, uh, like graphics flight recorder doesn't work with it. And to make it work, you need uh, some new Vulkan extension and so on. It was much easier to deal with uh, in in the driver itself by uh, doing all the things synchronously. And it worked uh, rather great. But uh, this tool is currently is not used too much due to the, the tooling I will talk about now. OK. Uh, let's say you cannot even reproduce the bug. Some bugs uh, are random hangs occurring in different parts of the game, and so on. So the, um, the easy way to reproduce them is just to record all comments submitted to the GPU and then replace them back. I mean, for most hangs and issues, works great for uh, uh, reproducing them. There are a few caveats, like uh, it's necessary to record all buffer objects submitted, and there could be a lot for uh, some AAA game, uh, so it works mostly for one frame or two frames. And not all issues are reproducible this way. There are some that are too finicky for this, uh, but most of them are reproducible, so it's good enough. Uh, but it's not enough to just be able to replay uh, the trace and see a hand in uh, in the mask, uh, you have to have a way to narrow it down. So what we implemented it's a, is a simple way to edit the common stream. So we could decompile some submit to the GPU into very trivial packets, like there are packet names only in comments right there. Uh, besides some of them. Uh, it's, it's really easy to do for probably any GPU, and even in this uh, form, it's very powerful, because, because you could bisect the trace and find the exact comment which hangs, even if you have like uh, the comment um, even if it's impossible to determine from any other way. Uh, how to deal with it. So you could edit 
uh, some part of the packet and uh, see if it helps. If it solves the hang, you could like deal with, with it as with ordinary code. Uh, what if the issue is inside the shader itself? Uh, we already could compile the shaders from assembly. So with this replay tool, we could add ability to just print some registers from the shader. And the most trivial print is good enough. So our print takes uh, temporary registers for uh, address and so on, and uh, registers to print. And print them. Like it increments global counter and writes to global storage and replay tool just reads from it and prints the registers. It's trivial and it was incredibly useful in reverse engineering and hardware. You get the trace from proprietary driver, you decompile it, you edit the shader to print something and you see the values and what's going on. It's incredibly useful. And the last tool in our, um, in our tooling is the way to debug uh, undefined registers, uh, stale registers. Uh, a lot of issues are due to reading of um, r like wrong value from the register. Some state is not emitted. Uh, even um, games have issues of not emitting some state and so on. Um, a simple solution, at least for us, it was um, writing uh, wrong, and, uh, like wrong values to all the registers uh, and seeing what what's breaks. And it mostly works. It's not that trivial because there are at least registers which are written at the start of command buffers and never touched again. And there are registers uh, written in each uh, like in the render, in the render pass, like <coughs> register set, that are set by pipelines. Uh, so we divided the registers into two categories, the ones that are set at the start of uh, command buffer and the ones that uh, should be uh, stomped before each bleed and render pass. Again, um, there are some other caveats, but it helped us uh, quite a lot in debugging various issues when we implement new features and forget about some uh, weird registers. Mm. Okay, uh, what are the real users of our driver at the moment? Like where you could see it? Um, at the moment they are emulators on Android. Uh, why? Because proprietary drivers are terrible on Android. Not due to their code, but uh, due to update policy of proprietary drivers there. They are not updated at all. So users are stuck with their terrible, many years outdated drivers. Oh, and with many issues. These drivers have many issues. issues. They don't have uh, necessary extensions. Uh, like, it's bad. It's really bad. And emulators need uh, new, new features. They need uh, for drivers to work. They push drivers to the limit. Uh, so if, uh, so they, like, for example, Yuzu now uh, is able to load our driver, uh, Chornip, and use it instead of proprietary driver. And it works rather well for them. And uh, I remember some other emulators uh, use the same technique to deal with issues in proprietary driver. Okay, let's see an example. Here is um, some Zelda game running on Android on Adreno 650 with our driver. Uh, it's running rather great, even if it's a, a previous generation of Adreno. Like FPS uh, is nice, 
runs correctly is great. Uh, so proprietary driver is a bit weird to say the least. <laughs> like maybe it, maybe it works with the, the most recent one, but it's hard to tell. Drivers are not updated. It's hard for users to update them and so on. So there are lots of issues and probably they don't test with these games. Uh, okay. Uh, fair enough. We also don't really test these games, <coughs> mm, but uh, the developers of at least Yuzu are willing to implement some mm, debug tooling, like recording the games, uh, the game traces, for us to easy to debug them, because like it's not that easy to launch the game without uh, having the switch itself. Like it's not legal. <laughs> Okay, earlier I said that Turnip implements all the features uh, for DXVK and uh, VK D3D Proton. So can we run desktop games? Yes, we can run desktop games. Here you see um, laptop X13S running Cyberpunk. Uh, it runs via a lot of la layers, like you need FAX emulator to translate uh, X64 uh, assembly into IRM64 assembly. You need Vine for Windows <laughs> compatibility. You need uh, VKDCD Proton and so on. There are lots of layers. So we mostly test game traces, not games themselves. We test games, but mostly traces because they are easier to deal with. But we will test games more soon. Uh, so, what is the future for us? We need to support uh, tile based rendering on 700 series because it would maybe not give a lot of performance boost for desktop games, but it would uh, lower uh, power consumption and help probably on Android for their games. Uh, Mark Collins, my teammate, is working on it. Uh, and I hope we will see it merged soon. It would be great. And then we need to squeeze even more performance. There are lots of performance features we need to implement there. So even if we will not come to um, proprietary driver uh, performance, we expect to be somewhere near it. At least we hope for this. <laughs> I hope. Um, and in the distant future, uh, we want to implement ray tracing because uh, some, like at least se uh, like 740 should be able to support ray query. And 750 probably could support uh, uh, ray tracing pipelines. I hope we implement, implement this someday. And maybe we would be able to implement my shaders. That would be cool. Um, OK, another exciting development, not from us. Not, it's not a Galeas project, but uh, an easy way to run desktop games on Android. Uh, there is a work in progress project called uh, Kasha. It's worked uh, upon by one of my teammates, again, Mark Collins, uh, and some other people out there. It's an amalgamation of Vine, DXVK, VK, D3D, and FaxCore on Android. And uh, I hope Turnip would have a first party support there, so it would be all bundled together and work together as one. Uh, you may say that people already are running desktop games on Android. Like, here you see some person running Assassin's Creed on their device. Like, it runs. Uh, yes, that's true. There is project. There are several projects, probably, for this. Uh, it is done with Thermux. It's, um, 
I mean, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Uh, <laughs> but it's even more unholy amalgamation of uh, projects. Uh, it, it runs, it's really cool, but there are some performance issues, some issues with how all these moving scenes are, uh, are stuck together. But like people running games, desktop games on Android, that's super cool. Okay, that's all from me for the day. So you have some questions, suggestions? Uh, uh, so you said uh, you mic uh, mic no? Okay. So uh, you said you could use this on Android to replace the proprietary drivers. Yes, you could use. Um, there are two cases. If you want to replace um, proprietary driver for the whole system, you need uh, root. You cannot change system libraries without root. Uh, but if you want to use a turnip for emulator, uh, if emulator supports this, it could just load uh, the shared library packaged for it. So, and uh, Google Play allows emulators to use custom drivers. They asked for it, and Google Play allowed it for this case. And the, shared, um, the loaded driver talks to the uh, proprietary kernel driver. Yeah, there is proprietary kernel driver, KGSL. It's a downstream driver. So we have backends for several uh, kernel interfaces. That's right. Anyone else then? So, sorry, when you're called to run with uh, the upstream uh, Kudrino in the kernel? Well, could you repeat the question? Sorry. How would your, your implementation interact with the upstream kernel driver for the 7xx? Have you, do you guys test it? Do you plan we it? We develop uh, MESA for 700 series on uh, MSM, on upstream. Uh, not exactly on upstream MSM, because we have some custom changes to make it work. Not all of them are upstreamed, at least for 750 GPU. But like, it will be all upstream. Like, we need it upstreamed. It would be there. But uh, the kernel is not done. Uh, by us, so we don't have much control. It's other people working on it. <coughs> okay, I guess that's all. Thank you.